Hello everyone! Today we are painting sunflowers for day 29 of our 30 days of watercolor flowers. And I mean sunflowers. One of my very favorite flowers. I've saved it for the last week for a reason. So let's get started. I wanted these sunflowers to be extra loose and so I busted out my trusty Da Vinci mop brush size 2 for this flower. And the reason I'm using this specific brush is because it has a lot more give to the bristles. So I'm able to create these really more random and chaotic shapes with the bristles of this brush. Putting different pressures on the tip and the base, you can create the same kind of look with a typical round brush, but I've noticed that when I create sunflowers and I'm able to do these more random petals, they just look really realistic to me. So this brush just really helps me to create that effect. Something that helps me when I'm painting flowers that have such a large center is you can kind of see really lightly, I've sketched out where I want the center of the flowers to be. And so this one on the left, I have a really oval circle for the center because I wanted it to be facing the left, kind of angled towards the left. And then here on the lower right, I'm painting one that's kind of, you know, we're only seeing half of it and it's more pointed downward. The fun thing about sunflowers is they really point in all kinds of crazy positions. Their petals really are not quite as perfect as, you know, we imagine them to be. And so they can really be this really wispy and loose and relaxed flower. And I feel like the more relaxed you have it, the better they look. And also something to keep in mind is with sunflowers, the center is really large and the petals are a lot shorter than you might think. And so this helps distinguish in your paintings um, a sunflower from like a daisy. So a daisy will have a lot longer of a petal compared to its center, but a sunflower is going to have these really short, uh, wispy petals that kind of go all different directions and then a very large, darker brown center. So really I'm just using a combination of the tip of my brush and the center of my brush to create small thin strokes and then those classic kind of teardrop shape strokes for uh, the petals of the sunflower. Now I'm also going through and adding a golden orange color to the petals before they're totally dry around where the center of the flower is. And this is just going to give that illusion that there's kind of some shadowing around those petals and it just helps create depth. So I'm just kind of using the tip of my brush to just really dab it on to the ends of those petals. And I'm not too worried if some of the petals have dried and it's not fully bleeding into the yellow color. I'm fine if it's a little bit more stark. It kind of looks good in some ways if some of the color blends and some of it is a little bit more harsh with the line. I think that looks good when it's all together. I'm also adding a little bit of orange to the petals here and there. I'll add a little bit more detail to the petals later, but for now I'm going to work on the greenery. So because this flower on the right side is kind of pointed downward, we are going to be seeing a lot of that base greenery that comes up and hugs the flower. So I'm keeping it really loose and keeping my strokes thin around the edges making sure to make it pretty thick around the flower because if you look at a reference picture for a sunflower, that area that hugs up and around the base of the flower is pretty thick. And just make sure that you keep some white space. You don't want it to be one giant green blob. Remember that white space is an illusion for like highlights and separation of different leaves and such. So then I'm also going to be adding stems and leaves and I'm using the tip of my brush with light pressure, the base or belly of my brush with lots of heavy pressure, and then again the tip of my brush with lots of light pressure again for those leaves. And when you're painting these stems, remember to really imagine where the center of that flower is, where the stem is coming down, because you don't want the stem to be off center from where realistically it's going to be coming down from your flower. And the leaves of sunflowers are pretty big, so I keep them generally big. I'm keeping them really loose, nice and light with lots of white space as well. The reason that I try to use different brushes depending on what I'm painting is because I like to let the brush 
kind of lead the direction of my strokes. So if I have this really nice loose mop brush, my strokes are going to be looser and more chaotic in a way. And so it will really determine how your painting turns out. If you want a tighter, cleaner, crisper painting, then you need a tighter brush. So a tighter round brush, similar to the one that I have been using, will help you create that same kind of look. And I'm also going through to the green and adding some dark green under the sunflower for shadows and along the stems. I'm adding another leaf here at the top because I felt like that upper left area needed some something more for the composition and just generally fiddling around and fixing little bits and pieces here. And now we're going to paint the centers. And for the centers, we're really going to want to make sure that the petals are 100% dry before we start on this brown to black center because we want our petals to stay nice and bright and yellow and we don't really want a whole lot of bleeding at this point. So we're going to start with a really light brown color and we're going to dab our brush kind of just with the tip of the brush with this brown color and we're going to leave a lot of white space. So we're just going to kind of dab it on here and there, leaving white space. And what's important to imagine when we're painting these centers is I'm going to imagine where my light source is coming from. So in this case, I'm imagining it coming from the upper left. And so I'm going to try to keep anything that would be hitting the upper left portion of my center of my flower to keep that a lighter brown color. So when I go in and start adding darker browns and blacks, I'm going to make sure that those areas of darker color are going to be lower and away from where I'm imagining the sun is hitting the center. For this flower on the lower right, the sun is not going to be hitting the center of the flower at all. So I'm going to make sure that the whole thing is dark. We're going to maintain the white space, but the whole center on this lower flower is going to be dark brown to kind of a blackish color. I'm going to mix it up between those two colors, but there's not going to be any of the light brown, so we can kind of get the illusion that there's no sunlight hitting that area. It's just a nice shadowy center. So again, I'm just using a highly pigmented color. This time it's black on these centers over here to the left, and I'm just dabbing the tip of my brush around in little kind of you know, bouncy strokes. I'm just wanting to get that speckly feeling. I'm making sure that the dark edges are along the bottom since my light source is coming from the upper left. And I'm just adding enough until I feel like it looks right. You're still going to want to add a few little spots of darkness in your sunspot area because some areas will have a little bit of shadow. You're going to want to keep that area lighter than the outside edge where you're having your darker shadow. I'm also using this darker color to take a moment to define my centers really well. So if I needed to fix the shape of them, make them more oval or long or full on one side, I'm doing that as well. And now for some of my final touches on the petals, I'm adding a kind of orangey gold color, just a little bit darker than the original yellow color. And I'm just kind of layering a couple of strokes over these petals so that they don't look really flat, that they don't look like one big blob. Anywhere where the petals have kind of merged together, I'm going to overlap another petal to just give it that layered and textured look. And because my mop brush really doesn't have a lot of firmness in the bristles, it's kind of hard to do some of the details. And so I wanted to take my firmer round brush and just kind of clean up some of the edges with the darker green and just make sure everything looked a little bit tidier. So we still have the messy loose look, but I just wanted to clean up some of those edges a little bit. And now that we have finished practicing our sunflower, I am adding it to our watercolor flower guide. And I feel like with this last week of flowers, I definitely saved the best for last. I love sunflowers. It was not forgotten. It was down here at the end for a reason. And I just love them. And I hope you love them too. Thank you so much for being here today. I will see you tomorrow for our last day, day 30. Bye.